Hello and welcome to this educational video. Whenever you hear the term Parkinson's disease, two things come to your mind. First, this is the disease of the elderly. People aged 60 and 65 and above most probably get this disease. Second thing is, the visible symptoms in Parkinson's patients is related to the movement of the person. That is, the people can have resting tremor they can have rigidity of the arms and legs, they can have problems with their balance and there is slowness of movement. These are visible in patients. But did you know that there are several symptoms which we may, we may not be able to see in the patients but these symptoms still exist. We are going to discuss today about such problems related to the mental health of Parkinson's patients, the kind of psychiatric problems that these patients experience because of the disease. To discuss with us about this, we have Dr. Pramod Paul, who is working as Professor of Neurology in NIMHANS. He is our expert in the field of movement disorders and Parkinson's disease. Namaste, Doctor. Namaste. And, uh, welcome to this uh, program. Most of us lay people like me and others in the audience know mostly about the movement problems, motor symptoms, things that actually other people can see. But uh, I also know only limited information that even mental health issues are there in patients with Parkinson's. So can you please elaborate a few things about the uh, mental health issues that these people experience? Thank you Dr. Bharat and as you rightly pointed out, uh, the neuropsychiatric problems in Parkinson's disease is one of the major non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. Non-motor, okay. Yeah, so that is also called a NMS. NMS. Yeah. Okay. And uh, probably the non-motor symptoms, including the neuropsychiatric manifestations as well as sleep problems, uh -huh. start many years before the onset of the motor symptoms like tremor or stiffness. Maybe 20 years before the onset of the motor symptoms, 20. the non-motor symptoms oh, can start. Okay, okay. And one of the major non-motor symptoms in the psychiatric domain is depression. depression. So, so among the neuropsychiatric manifestations, you can have depression, okay. anxiety, okay. psychosis, psychosis. Okay. then impairment of cognition. That is, you can go for you know later stages. You can have dementia, dementia. and also one of the very important manifestations which is very poorly recognized or known is impulse control disorders. So, uh, doctor, that means these kind of non-motor symptoms could be manifested even a couple of decades before the actual motor symptoms appear. Yeah, there are two major non-motor symptoms which can appear decades before the onset of motor symptoms. One is depression yeah. and another is sleep problem which is also known as REM behavior disorder of sleep. Here the patient can suddenly wake up in the sleep and start screaming. So today what we are going to discuss is mainly the psychiatric problems and one of the most important problems which is poorly recognized by the patient or the caregivers mm -hmm. is psychosis in Parkinson's psychosis. disease. So for people, lay people, we don't know what is yeah. the concept of uh, yeah. psychosis. So psychosis is usually a so-called psychiatric problem mm -hmm. and it, uh, it uh, the symptoms are such that as if the patient is out of the reality. There is loss of touch with the reality. Now, in the context of Parkinson's disease, psychosis can be defined as any experience mm. which the patient has uh, beyond the uh, real world. So, I will just simplify it. What is known as hallucinations? Hallucinations is perceiving something which there is no stimulus. So, in most of the patients of Parkinson's disease who have psychosis, they have visual hallucinations. Okay, so we'll imagine something that no. doesn't exist. So the visual hallucinations can be a very well formed visual hallucination or it can be a minor visual hallucinations. Oh. So the minor visual hallucinations is like the patient may say that somebody is standing behind my back. So that is called a sense of presence. Oh, okay. Though no one is standing behind the patient okay. or somebody is going in front of him. Though actually so that is called a passage hallucinations. So these are the very early 
problems in patients who are destined to develop a frank psychosis okay and you should realize much before the actual psychosis occurs and the actual visual hallucinations are patient sees something which is not there so there are imaginary friends animals or the same person they can go on seeing and the patient can go on interacting with that person okay, okay. Yeah. but generally this psychosis is a separate entity in itself so irrespective of whether parkinsons is there or not this is a psychiatric problem but it so happens in parkinsons patients apart from the moment problem the psychosis can happen yes so this happens uh, after the development of the i'll explain so uh, let me continue about the psychosis what other things can happen so as you rightly pointed out psychosis is mainly seen the hallucinations is mainly seen in disease called schizophrenia but schizophrenia, in correct. schizophrenia you get a auditory hallucinations patient usually hears something which is not uh-huh. there but in patients of Parkinson's disease who develop psychosis, it is mainly a visual hallucinations and though they can develop a auditory hallucinations, sometimes what is in the tactile hallucinations, the patient feels that some insects are crawling over the skin and apart from these hallucinations, another most important thing what the patient can develop is delusion, a false, a uh, perverted belief that somebody is harming him or somebody is harming her and somebody is talking about the patient or a delusion of infidelity they suspect that their spouses are not truthful to them so these are the things which can happen when a patient of parkinson disease develop psychosis okay. and the psychosis does not develop from the uh, onset of the parkinson the motor symptoms of parkinson disease if somebody has psychosis at the beginning of the parkinson disease at the time of motor symptoms mm. probably it is not a parkinson disease it is a different type of disease known as dementia with blue bodies okay that's a very important uh, very important differential diagnosis so a patient of classical parkinson disease okay. will never develop psychosis in the first few years usually it develops after few years okay. and it may not develop also okay. 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 so in general though the prevalence study is not known but over a lifetime a, about 50% of the patients of parkinson disease can develop psychosis that's a very big number yeah over the lifetime so over patient the, the patient of parkinson's can live up to 15 to 20 years is almost a normal lifespan okay. but there are certain patients mm-hmm. who can develop psychosis much earlier and these patients should be treated in a different way and also the caregivers of these patients should realize that the person the patient is having the psychosis it is not the patient is having some psych- different type of psychiatric problem or patient is doing it purposely Correct. a false belief or if seeing something which is not there is a Correct. part of the disease Correct. now what can happen is that usually what happens in our practice a patient who has developed parkinson disease after over 5 or 6 years of treatment with different medications they develop this type of problems and then if they tell us that i am having this passive hallucinations or sense of presence or i am hallucinating then we can stop certain medicines which can worsen the psychosis or which can precipitate the psychosis but so th- is you are saying the psychosis is related to the medication or, or in some cases it may be okay. apart from that or? yeah so in parkinson's disease we have now seen that there are different type of parkinson's disease mm-hmm. some patients can have very severe tremor predominant parkinson's disease tremor. or the patients can have a very stiffness and very less tremor uh-huh. so there are four or five factors mm-hmm. in parkinson's disease which can point towards that, that this patient is going to develop a psychosis so certain factors are there which tell us that probably after 5 years or 6 years these patients are going to develop oh those symptoms are uh, visible yeah. to the to the neurologist neurologist yeah you see so what are the risk factors for developing a psychosis so one is the elderly age group then the patient is being uh, treated with a certain type of drugs known as anticholinergic drugs like pacitan which is commonly used and then the patients who have uh, severe rigid akinetic type of parkinson's disease the very stiffness uh, hardly tremor that the patients can have history of rem behavior disorder of sleep or very severe difficulty in walking that is known as the pigd variant that is parkinson's disease with I- I- uh, problems in the gait and balance from the beginning they are not able to yeah. move so there are certain factors that there in patients of parkinson's disease which may point that look this patient is going to develop a psychosis and also if there is a cognitive dysfunction so usually a patient of parkinson's disease in the first 5 or 10 years they do not develop any dementia or cognitive dysfunction but a patient who is destined to develop no a patient 
who has developed a psychosis or is distant to develop a psychosis may have a cognitive problem in the early stages of Parkinson's disease. Okay, actually, there are a lot of things I'm yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. Just understand in lay terms. So, psychosis and Parkinson's, it's not an easy combination for anybody to decipher. Yeah. First of all, psychosis, uh, which happens in Parkinson's, only happens at the later stage. Not usually. Usually, not usually. Uh, in the uh, early along stages. with the early stages Correct. of movement. Correct, uh, yeah. So, if it is happening along with that, it is a different kind, it might disease. be a disease. It is a different type of disease if it disease. starts at all, like dementia with Lewy bodies. bodies. So, that's a different kind different of disease. So, one more thing, what you said, a very important message for the public is, the caregivers should be compassionate, should understand that if the Parkinson's patient is saying something about hallucinations, that he is yeah. seeing something, or he is sensing something, so you have to make a note of it and, and inform the neurologist. Yeah. And another important what you told us, the, another thing is, uh, the neurologist will be able to predict based on certain cues yeah. that this person could develop these problems Psychosis. over the course of, over the course of illness. illness. So, they are a high risk, high they risk. are in high risk. And this could also be associated with the drugs the person is taking. Yes. So what happens is that some of the patients who are destined to develop destined to develop psychosis, uh -huh. if you treat them early with certain type of drugs, okay. their psychosis may be precipitated. This is number one. Correct. So like if you give a trihexyphenidyl or pacitin okay. or a dopamine agonist like pamipexol or mau inhibitor like selegiline, racegiline, okay. in a patient who is destined to develop psychosis, within a month they may develop start developing psychosis. So the patient may not know, the relatives may not know and the relatives may tell that the patient is behaving very funnily he is talking with somebody he is having some false beliefs so if the patient tells us as well as the relative tells us immediately the dictum is to reduce and stop the medicines and look for other causes now there should be investigations when a patient develops psychosis we should also investigate for different other causes like we should do a good mri scan if it is not done and we also look for any electrolyte problems in the body like sodium sometimes the patients of parkinson's disease can have low sodium, can have you know metabolic abnormalities, some can sometimes can have infections, and that also sometimes can cause a hallucinations or a acute stage in Parkinson's disease. Okay. So these should be ruled out. Uh, correct. So uh, that brings me to the next question, doctor. So if it is happening happening because of some biochemical problems, like you said, uh, like sodium going down, etc., yes. or due to infection. So, you think this kind of thing will make it as a reversible thing? So, you take care of these things, you will reverse the Exactly. Is, is it possible? It is possible. So, any patient who develops a first time psychosis, we try to look into the, all the factors which I listed out. So, what are the inner, whether there is any extra, exogenous causes, like any patient has taken some drugs which we didn't advise, or patient is taking some drugs which is not recommended, patient is having some intercurrent infection, illness, has, has hyponatremia, patient is diabetic. So, after ruling out all these causes, then we defined, okay, I am going to stop some of the medicines and I am going to maintain the patient in a pure levodopa carbidopa preparation and in that process, most of the time, the psychosis goes away. Okay. If the psychosis does not go away, okay. then we try to get a psychiatric advice. Okay. The, our psychiatrist also evaluate the patient and in some cases, we have to start on a small dose of antipsychotic drugs. Okay, so you have to treat that yeah. also as now a yeah. symptom. Yeah. You have to give drugs yeah. specific. So, but the caution is that if you give antipsychotic drugs in a patient with Parkinson's disease, their Parkinson's disease worsens. The motor symptoms so, worsens. Because that yeah. drug will affect the exactly. problem. Exactly. So, the motor, so it is a you know double edged sword. Correct. If you once decrease the medications for Parkinson's disease, uh -huh. the psychosis disappears, Correct. but the patient may become very stiff right. and rigid. And so we have to adjust, and that adjustment is best done by the neurologist and his movement disorder specialist. Okay, actually, that's that's what makes this very complicated, sir. Not yes. only is the onset and the progression of the, the management is very complicated. The way you manage, it, yes. suppose you give drug for uh, the primary symptom, the other one might worsen, worsen. the other way. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, I think uh, you, you have given a totally new picture to a uh, new dimension rather to Parkinson's disease. So, if in a couple of sentences, if you yeah. want to summarize this and also give a message to the public as to the do's and don'ts when dealing with such problems and patients. Yeah. So, uh, what I want to emphasize in this our interview is that uh, patients of Parkinson's disease not only have shaking and difficulty in walking, they also have a lot of neuropsychiatric problems and today we have discussed one of the 
very important neuropsychiatric problem known as psychosis where the patient sometimes sees or sometimes hear imaginary things and see some animals or human beings and sometimes it is threatening for them sometimes the patient reacts with them and in the initial stages this can be recognized even by the patient as well as the relative by certain symptoms like the patient is complaining that somebody is standing behind, behind me or somebody is going in front of me or I am seeing something which is not there. So if you, so a message to the patients as well as the caregiver is that if you have this type of problems do not ignore. Parkinson's disease is not only your shaking or the stiffness, you can have a lot of these neuropsychiatric problems and if you have them, it is definitely treatable, it is 100% treatable in the early stages. Only thing that you consult your treating doctor and if your movement is at a specialist treating you, you come back to him and we will do the needful, we will first investigate if there is any reversible causes, otherwise we will adjust your medications and definitely you will be having a good life with control of your Parkinson's disease motor symptoms as well as your non motor symptoms mainly psychosis. So do not neglect these small symptoms which may you may develop and you may feel it that it is not at all important. Thank you, Doctor. Thank, Thank you, you for elaborating on a new dimension to Parkinson's. The non-motor sim symptoms, especially the uh, psychiatric problems and focusing specifically on uh, psychosis. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor.